In the previous lecture, we talked about method of joint. Now we are going to look at another method of analyzing determinate truss structure, that is method of section. If you want to analyze each and every member of the truss structure, then you are going to use method of joint. However, if you want to analyze a specific member, you want to determine member force within the specific member of the truss, then you are going to use method of section. Now we are going to understand method of section while solving this question over here. So the question over here says that determine the force in member EF, BF and BC of the truss shown in the figure. Indicate whether the members are in compression or in tension. So we have to determine member force in EF, this inclined member over here and this BC member over here. The first step is to determine external reactions or support reactions. That is RAX, RAY and RDY. How we are going to do that? We are going to apply conditions of equilibrium that is summation of f of x, summation of f of y and summation m about a particular point equals to zero. The first I am going to apply is summation of f of y that is summation of forces in y direction and I have taken the sign convention for the forces upward positive. If the force is going up then it will be positive. If the force is acting downward then it will be negative. So there are five forces which are acting in y direction. RAY, RDY, this 5 keep over here, this 5 keep over here, and this 2. So RAY, RDY, and these two 5s are acting upward. That's why they are positive. And this 2 over here is acting downward, which is opposite to my sign convention over here. So if I simplify this, I'm going to obtain this equation over here. RAY plus RDY equals to minus 8. Let's name this equation as equation number 1. Now we are going to apply summation of f of x equals 0. That is summation of forces in x direction is equal to 0. And I have taken the sign convention for the force as rightward positive. So if the force is going to the right, I am going to take it as positive. So there are two forces which are acting in x direction. This RAX over here and this 10 kips force over here. Both are acting to the right. So both of them are going to be positive. So if you simplify this, I get Rax equals to minus 10. This minus sign over here indicates that the direction of the force I assumed earlier is wrong. This should be pointing towards the left to maintain the equilibrium of the truss. So Rax is equal to 10 acting to the left. Now we are going to apply last remaining condition of equilibrium that is summing the moment about a particular point and equating it to zero. And I have taken the clockwise moment as positive for my sign convention. So I am summing the moment about this point over here. So if I apply the conditions, I get these terms over here. So this is force. The first number is force and the second number is the perpendicular arm. So this term over here is the moment produced due to this force over here. This force produces counterclockwise moment which is against my sign convention. So this is going to be negative over here. And this is the perpendicular arm. This distance from here to here is the perpendicular arm because I'm summing the moment about this point over here. So this is 5 feet. Second term over here is the moment produced due to this force over here. And it also produces anti-clockwise moment. And this is going to be negative. And it has a perpendicular arm of 10 feet. The third term over here is the moment produced due to this 2 kip force. This 2 kip force produces clockwise moment and it has a perpendicular arm equals to 10 feet. The fourth term over here is the moment produced due to this force over here and it produces a clockwise moment about A point and it has a perpendicular arm of 5 feet with respect to A point. And the last term over here, RDY, that is the support reaction, is creating counterclockwise moment with respect to point A and it has a perpendicular arm of 15 feet. 
So we can see over here in this equation that we have one unknown only. If we solve this, we can get the value of r dy from here and it's coming out to be equal to minus 0.333 kips. So this minus sign over here indicates that the direction of the force assumed earlier is wrong, is incorrect. This should be pointing downward. So this is the equation that we obtained by applying the condition of equilibrium that is summation of f of y. If we substitute this value over here, we can obtain the value of r y from here, this value over here. So r y is calculated as equal to minus 7.667 kips. Similarly, this minus sign over here also indicates that the direction of the force assumed earlier of r y is incorrect. This should be pointing downward. Now after determining reactions, we are going to cut a section over here. Let's name this section as 1 1. You should cut a section in such a manner that it passes through those members in which you are trying to determine internal force or member force. So if you want to calculate FEF or FBF, then your section should pass through these members over here. It is not necessary that you cut a section in a straight line. You can cut a section something like this as well as like this. It is suggested that your section should not pass more than three members because we have three conditions of equilibrium. So this section over here divides the truss into two parts. Left section truss, right section truss. These forces over here shown by the green arrow are internal forces or member forces which we are trying to determine. FEF, FPF and FPC. FEF is going to be equal to FFE. Why? Because they have to maintain equilibrium at section 1 1. And the other reason is that EF member is going to have one value of member force only. Similar is the case with BF member and BC member. They can't have more than one value. So whether you calculate FEF or FFE, they are going to be same. Similar is the case for these forces as well. At first, I've assumed that these forces are acting in tension because they are pointing away from the cross section. So this is the cross section over here. This is the cross section. All of the arrows are pointing away from the cross section, which indicates that the member is in tension. If the arrow is pointing inside of the cross section or is going inside the cross section, then the member is in compression. So let's understand why the force which is coming outside of the cross section is taken as tension. So let's assume a bar over here and apply a tensile axial load to it. And let's cut a section over here. This is the upward segment of the bar. Is this an equilibrium? No, it's not. We need to have an internal force over here in order for this segment to be in equilibrium. Similar is the case for this segment over here. So we can see that over here that these forces or these internal forces over here are coming outside of the cross section if the member is in tension. So that's why as the force is pointing outside of the cross section or away from the cross section, it is taken in tension. A principle of equilibrium says that if the whole structure is in equilibrium, then every part of it is going to be in equilibrium. Same goes for the truss. If the whole truss, this truss over here, is in equilibrium, then every part of it is going to be in equilibrium. The first part as well as the second part over here is going to be in equilibrium. So that means we can apply conditions of equilibrium to these parts of the truss and solve these internal forces over here. So if I apply conditions of equilibrium to this part, I'm going to determine these forces over here. If I apply a condition of equilibrium to this part over here, the second part, I'm going to obtain these forces over here. So now we are going to apply conditions of equilibrium to the first part of the truss, that is left section truss. But before that, we are going to extend the line of action of these forces over here. FEF and FPF. 
So, so the line of action of force of these forces will intersect at some point. Let's name that point as O. Now we are going to sum the moment about this point O. And I've taken the and I've taken the sign convention for moment as clockwise positive. So if we apply this condition, we get these terms over here. So the first term over here is the moment created due to this force. This force produces clockwise moment. That's why it's positive. And it has a perpendicular arm of 5 feet with respect to O point. The second term over here is the moment produced due to this force about point A. It produces a counterclockwise moment which is against my sign convention so that's why it's negative. And it has a perpendicular arm of 10 feet with respect to O point. The third term over here is the moment produced due to this force. This force produces clockwise moment about this point and it has a perpendicular arm of 5 feet. And in the last we have FBC this internal force over here. So it produces counterclockwise moment with respect to point O and it has a perpendicular arm of 5 feet. So if we take a look over here we have one unknown only FPC. So if we simplify this we can obtain the value of FPC as equal to minus 0.334 kips. If you obtain a positive value then your member is in tension. If you obtain a negative value then your member is in compression. FPC is in compression. Now we are going to apply a summation of f of y equals to zero and take upward forces as positive. So before applying this condition, let's resolve this force into its component, x component and y component. Let's say this is our theta over here, which this force makes with the horizontal. And if you look at the geometry of the truss, this theta over here is going to be the same angle over here. So how do we calculate this angle over here? So if we draw a right angle over here, we can apply 10 theta and 10 theta is equal to perpendicular upon base. So perpendicular in our case is 5 and base is also equal to 5. So 10 theta is equal to 1. And theta, if you calculate from here, will be equal to 45. So this angle over here is equal to 45. The component adjacent to theta is going to involve the term of cos theta multiplied by the magnitude of the force. The other component is going to be FPF sine theta. So how many forces are acting in y direction? There are three forces, FPF sine theta, minus 7.667, and plus 5. This force over here, and this 5 kip, and this RAY. If they are going acting upward, they will be positive, such as this FPF sine theta and 5 kip. If they are acting downward, I have taken them as negative. So if you solve this, we can obtain the value of FPF from over here, and FPF is coming out to be equal to 3.771 kips. Now let's apply summation of f of x equals to 0 and I've taken rightward forces as positive. So how many forces are there which are acting in x direction? We have FPF over here, this FPF cos theta over here is acting in x direction, FPC over here and this 10 over here. So there are total 4 forces. So if they are acting towards the right, I've taken them as positive and if they are acting towards the left, I've taken them as negative. So if we substitute these values over here, this FBC over here and FBF here, we can obtain, we see over here that we, have, we are left with one unknown only. And if we simplify this, we will get FEF equals to 7.667 kips. Now we are going to apply conditions of equilibrium to the second part of the truss, that is right section truss. First, we are going to extend the line of action of force FFB and FCP and they will meet at a certain point. Let's name that point as O dash. Now, let's sum the moment about this point, about this O point. 
So if we apply the condition, we get these terms over here. The first term over here is the moment created due to this force. It produces counterclockwise. That's why it's negative and it has a perpendicular arm of 5 feet. This distance is 5 feet. And the second term over here is the moment created due to this force over here. It produces clockwise moment and it has a perpendicular and it has a perpendicular arm of 5 feet. The third term over here is the moment created due to this force and it produces clockwise moment with respect to point O dash and it has a perpendicular arm of 5 feet. This internal force over here produces clockwise, counterclockwise moment, sorry, and it has a perpendicular arm of 5 feet. That's why it's negative. And this last term is a moment created due to this 0.33 kip force. It produces clockwise moment. That's why it's positive and it has a perpendicular arm of 10 feet. So we can see over here we have one unknown FFE. If you solve this, FFE is obtained as 7.66 kips in tension. Now we are going to apply summation of for pi equals 0, taking upward forces as positive. But before that, let's resolve this force into its component, x component and y component. This theta over here is going to be equal to this angle over here. And this angle, if you look at the geometry of the thrust, is going to be equal to this angle. And we calculated, in the previous slide, we calculated this angle and it was coming out to be 45 degree. So that's why this angle is equal to 45. So how many forces are there which are acting in y direction? We have four forces. So we have FFB sine theta over here, this one, and RDY over here, this 5 kip over here, and this 2 kip as well. So if we solve this, we can obtain the value of FFB from over here, and it's coming out to be 3.771 kips. Now let's apply summation of f of x equals 0, summing the forces in x direction. And I've taken the sign convention for the force as rightward positive. So there are four forces which are acting in x direction. This one over here, FFE, FCB, and this 10 kip over here. If they are pointing towards the right, I've taken them as positive. If they are pointing towards the left, they are negative. So if I substitute this value over here and FFE over here, I have one unknown in this equation. And if I solve this, I can get the value of FCB from over here, which is coming out to be equal to minus 0.334 kips and it's in compression because it's negative. So these are the results which we obtained from applying conditions of equilibrium to left section truss, this truss over here. And these are the results which are determined by applying conditions of equilibrium to this part of the truss. So if you note over here, FEF is equal to FFE. Same is the case for this force, this pair of force as well. So you can only calculate internal forces just by applying conditions of equilibrium to one part of the truss only. But if you want to recheck your results or your calculations, then you need to apply conditions of equilibrium over here as well. So you can check them whether these forces are coming out to be equal or not. And we are done with the question. Thank you.